Good evening, friends. So there's a growing number of congressional Democrats that are now warning the Federal Reserve of a recession in the United States. The Biden administration are also now looking at a new plan to avoid a recession. More direct deposit payments are also arriving in millions of Americans' bank accounts this very week. So dear friends of mine, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video to hear about the complete details, I will also be giving away four $75 Walmart gift cards every week. Please make sure you enter the giveaways simply by clicking and liking several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. During the months of October, November, and December, I will be surprising several of you with $200 gift cards, especially to those of you that have been in this community for several months. It's a way to say thank you so very much for being here every day. The whole big corporation is accountable, and these steps will immediately start saving Americans collectively billions of dollars in unfair fees. And I'm here with the director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, Mr. Chopra, as well as the chair of the Federal Trade Commission, Lena Khan. And we're remembering uh, we're, they're, they're members of the Competition Council that I created last year to promote competition across the economy and lower costs for families. One of the key things I've asked the council to take on was the unfair hidden fees known as junk fees that are taking real money, real money out of your pockets, real money out of the pockets of American families. Things like, as been mentioned, surprise banking overdraft fees, excessive credit card late fees, hidden hotel booking fees, or those huge termination charges to stop you from switching cable and internet plans to, do, to a better deal. Surprise charges that companies sneak into bills because they can. In fact, there's an entire industry that's popping up in America to help companies use complicated algorithms to hide fees that hurt consumers and help them. These things add up. <clears throat> Remember we talked in the beginning of the administration about the study done, I think it was at Penn, that if an average family got a $400 in uh, charges or bills in a month that they couldn't pay, they'd have to sell something and or have to, ha and, or have to borrow the money. Well, <clears throat> this adds up to more than $400 for a lot of families. The way I think about it, the way have you heard me say it before, my dad used to talk about it, and so many other people talk about it around their kitchen tables. How much your monthly bills, how much do you have to pay for necessities? And is there enough left over just to have a little breathing room? We're making progress in bringing down the cost of families. And by the way, the price of gasoline continues to fall. It's down for the third week in a row. They're down $1.25 a gallon from the beginning of the summer. And gas prices in the decade before the pandemic were averaging $3.30 before the pandemic, before I got here. During the pandemic, there was no one was driving, so the gas prices went down. But even with historic recovery we're seeing in the economy of 10 million new jobs and unemployment of 3.5%, gas prices are continuing to go down. And because they're going down, we're making serious progress in getting prices close to what they were before the pandemic. The most common price right now in America is $3.39 a gallon. It's going to come down more. And they're going to come down even further when gas companies, when the oil companies agree to our demand, my demand to pass on the savings from the price of a barrel oil, which is considerably down, to the pump, where, in fact, you get, you get charged by the gallon. Each year, but each year, these junk fees, in addition, that companies charge cost America tens of billions of dollars, weighing down family budgets and making it harder for people to pay their bills. So my administration is taking action to eliminate these fees. Now, friends, the Federal Reserve is most likely going to raise interest rates by three quarters of a percentage point again. This is a fourth rate hike, and it's still possible that another rate increase of that magnitude could come in December. But the very big question for millions of investors and American consumers is whether the Fed will send the U.S. economy into a recession with these massive rate increases. There are hopes that any downturn would be mild, but this is uncharted territory for the Fed. Former central bank chairs Alan Greenspan 
Ben Bernanke and Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen never had to raise rates this many times in a row by such large amounts. It is still unclear what this will do to our economy. The housing market is already starting to show some signs of strain, and mortgage rates have skyrocketed this year as a result of it. There is also a growing number of Democratic lawmakers on Capitol Hill who are warning Fed Chair Jerome Powell and other Fed members to slow down the rate hikes because they fear even tighter monetary policy will lead us into a recession. But as long as the jobs market remains healthy, the Fed is probably going to continue to focus solely on its price stability mandate and ignore all that stuff about maximum employment. The solid rebound is gross domestic product in the third quarter, following two straight quarters of economic contraction, and it also may quiet some worries on recession that could prompt the Fed to continue its aggressive rate hiking stance, even if such a policy risk causes a recession down the road. The big worry is that the Fed may be choosing to look more at current economic data and is not thinking enough about the lag effect of its existing rate hikes. Economists are forecasting a slowdown in job growth, but not a substantial one. According to estimates, that 200,000 jobs were added in October. That is down from job gains of 263,000 in September of this year. The unemployment rate, which fell to 3.5% in September, is expected to have ticked up to 3.6% this month, but that's still near a half-century low. Even if the pace of hiring is starting to slow down, it is clear that the labor market remains tight. Wages have grown at an above-average pace, albeit not as fast as inflation. The government said in the September jobs report that the average hourly earnings rose 5% in the past 12 months. The Fed typically prefers to see wage growth in the 2% to 3% annual range as a sign that inflation is under control. So a more dramatic slowdown in wage growth seems very unlikely, as long as the job market remains robust and consumer prices keep rising. So dear friends, what are your thoughts on this? And do you think that our economy is heading into a recession? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Friends, the key word for this video is St. Paul, Minnesota. If you would like to enter today's Walmart gift card giveaway, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below this keyword, which is St. Paul, Minnesota and additional keywords of any video of mine that you want. And do make sure, friends, that you are subscribed to my channel. Remember, friends, that the more videos that you comment on, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Now, if you're still waiting for a California stimulus check payment, you might not have to wait much longer. While the state sent direct deposit payments from October 7th to October 25th, debit cards started going out in the mail on October 24th. There are still a lot of Californians waiting for the refund to be deposited into their bank accounts. Those individuals will not have to wait much longer. California started a second round of direct deposit stimulus payments on October 28th. The one-time California stimulus payments range from $200 to $1,050, depending on the filing status and income reported on your 2020 California tax return and whether you have any dependents. Friends, if you're expecting a payment via direct deposit, you might want to start checking your bank account again each day. If it has not arrived already and you qualify for a direct deposit payment, it should show up in your account by mid-November. If you filed your 2020 California tax return electronically and received a California tax refund by direct deposit, then you will generally receive your stimulus payment by direct deposit as well. You can also expect a direct deposit payment if you previously received a Golden State stimulus payment in 2021 or earlier this year via that same payment method. Well, my awesome and amazing dear friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much, friends, for joining me here every day when I post a new video. And I truly hope that you found this information helpful.
I will be announcing a winner for the $75 Walmart gift card in a video later today. So please remember to enter the keywords in the comment section below of any video of mine that you watch. And do make sure, friends, that you do stay tuned for that video. Thank you and have a wonderful and blessed weekend.